Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Solution here, and in this video, I am going to show you the solution for question 6 from the Jan 2010 PUA Paper 2. If you want to see the solutions for the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so part A says to define the following terms, giving one example of each. And they're asking us to define statutory deductions and voluntary deductions. Okay, so let's go across here and we're going to see statutory deductions are mandated by the government. So deductions are amounts taken out of your income, your pay, your salary, whatever you want to call it. Statutory means government mandated. The government says, hey, you have to do this. Long story short. Some examples. So they ask for one. I'm going to give you a few. So income tax. The government mandates that for sure. You could have national insurance or sometimes also called social security. And you can also have one called health surcharge, which in Trinidad goes towards finance and the public health care system. Okay, now with respect to voluntary deductions, these are at the request of the employee. So the employee could have things to which he or she prefers to contribute or wants to contribute to, right? These could include things such as pensions, insurance or health plan, trade union dues and savings plans. Now, if you have any other examples of either statutory or voluntary deductions and you want to share them with us, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll take a look and we can help each other grow. Okay, let's take a look at part B. All right, so they're telling us here that Nalini Kalicharan's regular rate of pay is $35 per hour for an eight hour work day. Overtime is paid at a rate of time and a half for extra hours worked Monday to Friday Double time is paid for hours worked on weekends and public holidays. Below is Nalini's time card for the week ended April 15th. Okay, so we have this time card which shows the days and the hours worked on each of those days. And they want us to calculate. So it says on the answer sheet, which I've recreated and modified somewhat, calculate Nalini's gross pay for the week. Okay, so we're going to pull that up. So what I've done is I've included these two columns here. So I don't have to keep shifting back and forth or keep Nalini's um, time card on the screen, right? So they have the day. So the, the thing did give you the day, the regular hours. They wanted to calculate how many hours she worked at $35 per hour, how many hours she worked um, during the week for time and a half, and how many hours or overtime hours required double time, which means that she worked on a weekend or a holiday. Okay, so Sunday, she worked one to four. And... That requires overtime. See, it says weekend or holiday, overtime at double time. So one to four means that she's good. She worked for three hours, one o'clock to two o'clock, two o'clock to three o'clock, and three to four, right? Now, Monday, she worked eight to five. So eight to five is actually nine hours, which means that she worked eight regular hours and one overtime hour. So she's going to get $35 per hour for the first eight hours and time and a half for one hour on that particular day. On Tuesday, she worked 8 to 4, which is 8 hours, so no overtime at all. Wednesday, she worked 8 to 6, which is 10 hours. So she worked 8 regular hours and 2 overtime hours, which will attract, sorry, time and a half. Thursday, she worked 8 to 4, so Thursday is a regular 8 hour only um, workday. Friday, now Friday, hold on, let's go back to that information for a second because I did forget to put up an important piece of information. It says that Friday was a public holiday. All right, so yes, that should have been included in my um, spreadsheet, but we're seeing it here. So it's a public holiday and she worked from 10 to 3, right? So if it's a public holiday and she worked five hours, those are all going to be paid at double time. And Saturday, she worked from 12 to 4 and weekends attract double time and 12 to 4 is four hours. The total number of hours worked in each column are shown as follows. 32 for regular at, at regular $35 per hour. Three hours at time and a half, and 12 hours over time. So the pay rates are as follows. So for regular, again, it's 35. For, ta for the overtime during the week, it's time and a half. Now, time and a half means one and a half times the regular rate, right? Time and a half. And for the weekends and public holidays, she has double time, which is double the regular rate. So now all we have to do is multiply going down to find the total amount earned under each column. And what we have to finally do is simply add those together to get gross pay of $2,117.50. Long story short. Let's take a look at part C. Okay, so they're telling us here in part C that Kevin Stewart earns a monthly gross salary of $16,000. So monthly gross means before any deductions, any statutory or voluntary deductions are made. His monthly deductions are as follows. So they give us a nice little list here. So national insurance is 2% of gross pay. 
Credit union is $1,000 flat. Education tax is 1.5% of gross pay. Pension plan is $500 flat. And income tax is 20% after all other deductions. And they want us to calculate Kevin's monthly net pay and to show you workings. Okay, so we're going to pull up a little calculation here. We're going to start with the gross, the monthly gross pay of 16,000, monthly gross salary, sorry, right? Now we're going to subtract deductions, the pre-tax deductions. So the first one was the national insurance, which was 2% of gross pay. So we're going to put that in here. So 2% of 16,000 is 320. The next item was the credit union of $1,000, right? So you're going to put a flat $1,000 there. The next item was the education tax of 1.5% of gross pay. So you're going to find 1.5% of the 16,000. You're going to get 240. Next up, we have the pension item of $500 as a flat figure. No calculation necessary. Now, we're going to add up all of these deductions to get 2,060. And we're going to subtract it from the monthly gross in order to get taxable income. The income tax rate for Kevin is 20% after all other deductions. So you're simply going to find 20% of that 3940. It's going to give us 2788. And you're going to subtract that from the 3940 to get 11,152, which is Kevin's monthly net pay. And that's it for this question. Okay, guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question six from the Jan 2010 PUA paper two. If you have any other questions about it, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you when I have a chance. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website where you'll find some pretty useful PA handouts. Anyway, guys, as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.